development project. So it's very useful in terms of reviewing the design and looking at how then gender can be integrated. And secondly, it also can look at evaluating outcomes. So if you're looking at, let's say, gender-related changes over time, you can then see, OK, in this community, with a, um, there's been a change in terms of roles of women. There are now much more uh, roles of women that raises their status, for example. And I'll show you an example of that in, um, in those two examples that we use. And that has contributed to how the community then um, it, oh, it's opened up new roles for women, or that the community is now looking at more in terms of what other, you know, opened up other avenues for women more because of the introduction of the project. So that's how GEM um, has been used. Um, and I'll show you, okay. In the, in the book itself, there's a CD at the back that you can use, and it's also downloadable. And the way that we've um, organized is into, there's two, two entry points into GEM. One is coming from this entry point, which are the concepts. So if you, if you feel that you need to look at more, uh, understand more the gender concepts, this is a useful entry point into GEM because that's quite important before you can actually apply it. And in our experience in the last four years, four, five years, um, what we found is that we had to actually step back before implementing, in, before in, in, in uh, evaluating and do gender sensitivity, do gender training again, or reviews for, for all of the projects. Because sometimes um, there's uh, differences in terms of understanding what it is, what, what gender changes, what gender roles are, what gender relations are, and what changes are. So that's a good um, entry point. It has conceptual, a conceptual framework. And I, and I have to, and just to, to uh, say that we did not, I mean, these conceptual frameworks are, have been developed over time. Um, and there's a lot of material that, that can be, that, that is actually a reference that you can use. And I, I'm sure that, you know, IDRC has its own, CEDA also has its own gender um, frameworks. I mean, a lot of development agencies have their own frameworks, and there's quite a lot of resources out there to look at. Um, and that's also what we did. We went back to, to these um, frameworks and, and, start and looked at them and see, okay, how does that, how does that relate to ICT in this sector? And then the other entry point is the tool itself. Um, and that's what I wanted to show. The tool has some... Okay. It's on, I can't remember what page it is on the book, but that's how it um, works. And I just want, there's three phases to it, but really what, what is, for this workshop specifically, what is more relevant is this first phase. So if you see that, we went, you know, the, the intended use, intended users, which is what you've done. The, uh, and then you also have looked at step three, finalizing evaluation questions, right? But if you see this, there's, we have a step two here, which where you identify the gender and ICT issues. And that, in fact, determines or helps you define your evaluation questions as far as what you want to learn around gender. So you need to know what, in your context, what are the issues? What are the issues of inequality? What are the issues of empowerment or disempowerment for women before you can, in fact, look at or identify or formulate questions around gender? Yeah? Oh, Mike? <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so, so in fact, if, the pro if, you're, if you're interested in looking at that in your evaluation plans, this is the best time to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, some adjustment there. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, as I was saying, this is the best time to do it while you're developing your evaluation plan and developing your evaluation questions. Is that, is that 
get, get some, some space there to um, go back to your analysis of your context, look at what your issues are in relation to gender. Um, in your community, in your project team, in whatever, um, con you know, whatever context you want to evaluate, whatever it is you're evaluating. And then you look at an evaluation question. You could have one evaluation question that is focused on gender, and that's fine. And it's really up to your energy, your resources, et cetera. But I think the, the, the important thing is to make that visible from the beginning. Otherwise, it will fade away, or it will, you will not be able to, to you know, it will not, it will not, it will not, um, come out in the data. And you will see that in most of the evaluations. Um, it's quite amazing to see how much there's le very little sex desegregated data, and there's little reference around the differential impacts of projects for men and for women. So yeah. So just to put you in, a, in, the, in, in context in terms of where the um, the use of the tool, but I won't, I won't um, d dwell into that because it, you know, there's we, we don't have time to do that here. But I will. You, know, you have the books and also the the CD. So and and I'll I'll, I'll I'll let you look at that much more in in an, at another time. So then to to demonstrate just to to demonstrate it, let me let's um, look at some examples. Yeah. I think that unless there are there any questions so far? Okay. Sorry. You have this piece of paper here. Did you get the example? Yeah? The first example is DNET. Okay, DNET. It's the uh, it's an example of a, a helpline in Bangladesh. And there's a one page, and it tells you what the project is and key findings. This is actually coming out of an excerpt of their evaluation. D we, we work with DNET um, from, in terms, we did a GEM workshop with them. They organized a, um, and after that workshop, they adjusted their evaluation plan to look at gender issues. Uh, and they did, they did an evaluation using that. And some of the, some of the um, um, results, some of the findings, in fact, look at some of the gender issues and, and findings here. So, um, so let me, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll leave you about a few minutes to read this, and then I'll ask a few questions after that. Is that okay? Let's spend like three minutes reading this. This is a project where, um, it's established to primarily serve as a link between information suppliers and the target beneficiaries through working with an infomediary. So this is, in, this is a project that they um, implemented in some rural villages in Bangladesh. And what they, what they have is like they have an information supplier which is in Dhaka, which is like a, a, a helpline. Like um, and then that's where all the information is. They have like people ans answering phones there and providing the information. And they actually have a um, infomediaries, um, and m most of them they call them their mobile information ladies, and they provided information. And the link was through mobile phones. So they go to, to community. The community members ask questions, health, whatever questions you know, and then they would then the information the informatories or the, informa the mobile information ladies would then respond to questions. They would call back to the center, to the capital, and say, look, we need this information. Can you s send it? So it's, it is like call center, if you like. It's a p we call it like a people's call center, that kind of models. That, that's the kind of model. And in their findings, you'll see immediately, and these are not findings that they expected to f you know, in, in terms of one, who are the users of the, of, the, of the information? And they say here that housewives represented the biggest user group of the helpline. So in fact, the, um, if, you, if you look at what the um, gender issue there, they're saying they actually look at it. They, they, they identify it here. Um, 